focusing on Jesus. Hallelujah. I said you need a prophet. You know why I will not tell you everything about it? Huh? You know why? You know why? Because I know the scripture. There is no level of anointing that God has placed on you for you to condemn a preacher. It's nowhere in the Bible. I don't know, Bible scholars, are we here? There's no place in the Bible. If you truly love God and you are serving God and you are reading the scripture, there is nowhere the scripture said. He said, cause them. Nowhere. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But he said, beware. He said, beware, beware. Somebody said, beware. And it's a sign for you to know that before you step into any form of Christian gathering or any form of gathering in the name of prayer, you must see God's face. Hallelujah. Praise God. So you need a prophet. The major thing, let me tell you what hinders your miracle. Whether it's a faith prophet or a true prophet, what hinders a miracle is your faith. Even the fake prophet, from the fake prophet altar you can still receive. But your stand, your faith, your belief. Hallelujah. It is your faith. The woman with the issue of blood never knew the knowledge of Jesus. She did not know any history about Jesus. But she heard it, that there is a healer in town. The woman just made up her mind and said, I'm going to that healer. The woman did not make any inquiry. The woman did not ask whether it's a fake one or a true one. Clap your hand for Jesus Christ. <laughs> All what she knows is that she wants to come out of her problem. So that was her mindset. And that was why even on when others were present, trying to not trying to make Jesus notice them. The woman was busy looking for the hem of his garment. You can still touch the hem of the garment of whomever prophet you claim to be a fake one and you still get your miracles. Mind you, before fake, that, that is original. Nobody is born fake. What am I trying to tell you? Every preacher of the gospel is called by God and ordained by God. If not physically from the womb. So when we all know that the spirit of the prophet from God will always be with the prophet. I don't know if you are here. Are you here? Are you here? If you disagree with me, lift up your hand. You disagree with me, raise your hand. So that I will clear your doubts now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It is your mindset. It is your mindset. The woman did not make any inquiry. The woman don't want to know whether it's anything. People were receiving their healing. Even when there were a lot of criticism about Jesus, some people were very busy looking for how they can get their own. They were very, very busy. Look at the ten lepers. Clap your hands for Jesus Christ. That city remained with bitter water. Nobody when the prophet stepped into the city. And there was clean water. I prophesy today. That every ordinance of the enemies in your life are blotted out now. By the grace of God upon this ground. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. If you believe it, can I hear a living amen? Somebody, can you jump up and say, I need a prophet to live long. I need a prophet to survive this world. I need a prophet for my directions. I need a prophet to aspire high. I need
need a prophet to make it. I need a prophet to be healed. Uh, now, take your seat. I want to explain something to you. Now, talking about the prophet, I'm not only talking about the ones that see vision, the ones that prophesy. Every ordained minister of God is a prophet. Yes. Are we here? If you are a pastor, you are a prophet. But when we come, you see, that one is for ministers. When we come in the, in the manifestation of the gift now, that is how we begin to differentiate it. And some are giving the gift of this, and some are giving the gift. But everyone, Moses, according to the scripture, is a prophet. Abraham is a prophet. Samuel is a prophet. Hallelujah. Everyone that is anointed by God is a prophet. He's a prophet. He may not have the gift of prophecy, but he's a prophet. You know what that means? He can speak deep things about God, either revelationally, either through the word, or you see this word of God is a spirit. You can't read them with this eye globe. It takes only an eye of a prophet or a person. It takes only a, a prophetic eyes for you to read this scripture and understand it and then be able to communicate it to others. That is why many of us today it looks as if the Bible you carry is of no use for you. Why? Because you are reading the Bible with this eye glue. Clap your hands for Jesus. You need a prophet. You need a prophet in your family. You need a prophet in your place of business. You need a prophet to know what is going on. You need a prophet. Even prophets need prophets. Are we here? Every prophet self need prophet. Every prophet self need prophet. In any level you operate, there is somebody higher than you. The day you stop submitting to somebody, that day you are gone. Hallelujah. Then number three, say number three. Total submission to God. If you want to escape death, you have to submit to God totally, completely. Amen. Romans chapter 8, verse 1 to 10. James chapter 4, verse 7. Read it. Resist the devil and he will flee. Uh huh. Read it. Read it, read it, read it. Read it, read it, read it, read it. Who is reading? Read. Read it. Now read it. Romans 8 verse 1 to 10. Therefore no condemnation to them who are we are in Christ Jesus. Who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit. Mm-hmm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Clap your hands for Jesus Christ. If you submit yourself to God, the power of sin, they have no power over you. They exist, but they can't have power over you. Because the righteousness of Jesus have consumed you. Amen. So total submission. James chapter 4 verse 7. If you want to escape death, if you want to escape untimely death, James chapter 4 verse 7. Submit yourself to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Submit yourself to God. Resist the devil and he will what? And he will what? And he will what? Another one is prayer. Say prayer. prayer. You want to escape untimely death. You have to pray. Psalm 34 verse 17. Read it. Ephesians 4 verse 
Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 to 18. Read it. Prayer. The righteous cry. And the Lord hear it. And deliver them out of out of their troubles. The righteous cry. And the Lord hear it. And deliver them out of their troubles. Now crying there means praying. When you pray, if that problem touch you very well, you pray. If that, in fact, even if you have, you have been praying, and then the problem is still there, has, the thing never touch you well. If you touch you well, you, you take another dimension of prayer. <laughs> you know, there are some people that when they are praying, when they are praying, they are sleeping, sleep, praying, sleep. Their mouth is moving, but they are sleeping. Hallelujah. I remember when we were in Bible school, we are Okay, not pastoral now, Bible school then. Hallelujah. We are in a class. And we are being tutored. Hallelujah. And then the teacher said, Is there anybody with question? A woman from back back. She stood up and said, I have question. And the teacher said, Oh yeah. What is your question? He says, I, it's not like I have question as question, but there is something God showed me now. And the teacher said, tell us what God showed you now. He said, sir, please, I don't want to die in silence. He said, tell us what God showed you. He said, as we are there, I just see myself, close my eyes like this, and I saw grave, and I saw this. You know what the teacher said? The teacher said, because you were sleeping. Hallelujah. The reason why you saw that thing is because you were sleeping. There are so many people like that in church. Church is not a place where you come, you sleep. It's a place where you come, you cry your tears out. When you go home, you celebrate. It's a place of consolement. It's a place of settlement. It's a place where your joy is being restored. Church, that is house of God. So it's not a place where you come, you sleep. Hallelujah. It's a place where you come, you table your matter, you table your case. That is why sometimes there are some prayers I've been handling the midnight. I will tell the person, report yourself to God's altar. You have to by yourself report yourself. You know, we don't understand spiritual things the way it works. You see enemies, you see Babalawo. Before Babalawo carry work for you, go tell you say make you talk. You go give you something for hand. Not be so. You go say talk put for that thing. We don't know how to approach God. So I say to you again that that prayer you pray for God to roll away that calamity in your life that did not work is because you have not prayed. If He taught you where well, where, well, eh? If that problem, if be like say He get your ear now one ear, He never get the other ear. Don't worry. The time when go get the other ear small, you go pray well. Somebody shout prayer. prayer. Say prayer. prayer. Say prayer. prayer. Prayer not a fail. Prayer does not fail. It does not expire. Even when you pray and God outside of prayer, keep praying. Keep storing your, your bullets. Never you stop praying. Never. Tell somebody, never you stop praying. The day you stop praying, that day you die. Continue praying in season and in other season. When things are working, when they are not working, when God answered and God never answered, pray, 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 pray. Can you rise up and say, pray, 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 pray? Stand up and say, pray, 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 pray. Hey, can I talk to us today? Can I talk to us? Can I tell us something? Now, let me tell you that you can still be a believer, you can still live a holy life, but yet die a poor man and go to heaven. Yet you go to heaven. You can still be righteous. And God will look at you like he said to David, a man after my heart. We look at you in your family. In, among everybody, you see me say, you are the man after my heart in this family. But yet, you die of poverty. Prayer is the only machine gun you have to break the ordinances of the wicked out of your life. Even when you think it's not working, hey, it's working. Wow. 
It's working. Can you put your two hands on your head? I need to break a yoke out of your life before I continue. Put your two hands on your head. Every power. Say every power. Covering my spiritual eyes. Blocking my spiritual ears. Not to see, not to hear. When praying. Today, catch fire. Can you pray that prayer with your two hands on your head? Because that is the only conviction you have to be sure that God answered, that God heard you. When you pray, you don't hear, you don't see. Oh. Ay, ay, ay. Can you pray that prayer? Can you pray that prayer? La kashuta sutayaba leko sutayaba. La kashuta la paku sutayaba. Leke se telebre kantu zanda. Can you pray that prayer? Jesus. Whatever the devil has used to block your ears. And to close your eyes, not to see as you pray, not to hear as you pray today. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Fire, 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 fire. In Jesus' mighty name, we remove them. Take your seat. Uh. Take your seat. Take your seat. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 to 18. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that he may be able to do what? To do what? Shout it. Uh -huh.
praying in the spirit. Not just praying because you are asked to pray. That is why I said, when you pray and you don't get what you want, repeat the prayer. And I also said that the reason why you are still managing that pattern of prayer is because the thing never gets you well. If you get you well, you will remember saying that, that that night is not meant for sleeping for children of God. Night is a time where the enemy so tires. And God is trust that we should pray. Jesus was in the garden of Gethsemane and he went forward to pray. And then he left the disciples and when he came back, what happened? They were sleeping. He shouted at them and said, Ah, oh, can't you wait for even a minute and pray? Can you rise up? Let me pray this one for you. Say the anointing to pray. Can you say anointing to pray? Anointing to pray. Anointing to be a prayer warrior. Fall upon me now. Anointing to be a prayer warrior. Fall upon me now. You have to pray. If you don't pray, what wanted God does with what you? The devil is always mad whenever you pray. Your prayer is a danger to them. It makes them feel uncomfortable. They are never themselves when you pray. In Jesus' name, we pray. Take your seat. You know, prayer is also different kinds of prayer. As a seeking prayer, seeking prayer is what you have. I once had it, but I don't have it again. It's not the way you pray prayer of asking that you pray this one. Every verse is not meant for every problem. There's a particular portion in the Bible that will have the antidote to your settlement. That is what you want. Topic for another day. Clap your hands for Jesus. <laughs> another one is deliverance. Say deliverance. If you have done everything possible and all still remain the same, what do you do? Eh? The psalmist said, I will enter his gate with thanksgiving in my heart. Sing that song. Aha. Aha. Hey! Hey! Oh! And then I will rejoice now. When you have done everything possible, you have done all you're supposed to do as a believer, as one that knows his right and is standing God, and all things remain the same. Find your way to God's house. Look for where the temple of God is. Even though you are his temple, even though you are his temple, let me tell you something. Sometimes, or at times, the problem we are fighting is with us. The thing we don't want is just with us. A woman was looking for help. And then he went to a prophet. The prophet said, He said, This they're looking for your whole house. Everybody in your house are demonized. Demons, witches are manipulating all of them. So the deliverer will start from you. The prophet said. He said, If you want these people to be free, it begins from you. You will get to freedom first. The prophet said, I'm not going to touch you, but I will give you a place, a stand in a particular place to pray. And this is the prayer point. Go. And the woman stood. The prophet ignored her. Then as she was praying, she became a prophet unto herself. Prayer turned to prophecy for herself, by herself. He, told, he later turned to praise it for herself, by herself. He later turned to victory by herself. She now began, the children were not there, the family were not there, but she now began to control deliverance for them. And then when she went home, she became a giant. Against the enemies, and she ministered deliverance on all the children, and they were free. Can I pray this prayer for you? Every spiritual tool that you need to be a warrior in your family, receive it now. Every spiritual weapon that you need. 
to be a giant, to stand out among your equals, to stand as a man piece of God in your family, in your, in your career, in your endeavor. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Because we are going to heaven, but not alone. We are taking as many as possible. So the fight is not only for ourselves. We are fighting for ourselves. We are fighting for others. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Obadiah chapter 1 verse 17. Obediah chapter 1 verse 17. Read it. Read it. But upon Mount Zion. Are you there? Read it. Read it. Shout it louder. Huh? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. But upon Mount Zion shall be delivered. And there shall be holiness. There upon the mountain shall be holiness. There. And then you shall possess your possession. So if you have tried everything possible and it's not working out, I want to announce to you now, it's not a mistake that you are here today. Are we here? We are here. You are here to possess your possessions. Can you rise up and confess it? I have come to possess my possessions. Confess it, confess it, confess it. It's not by mistake or accident that I came here. I come here to possess my possession. And I must possess it before I walk out of this place. Can you confess it? Don't soliloquize. Pray out. The righteous prayed, and the Lord heard him and delivered him from his problems. The righteous cried, praying out, pray out. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Take your seat. Okay, rise up. Take your seat first. Take your seat. Now, rise up. Take your seat again. Please, rise up. Thank you for taking your seat now. Thank you for taking your seat now. Oh, rise up. Can you help me turn around to three persons and say, you are not permitted to die premature. You are not permitted to die untimely. Hi. You can't die untimely, brother. You can't die untimely. You can't die untimely, sister. Take your seat now. Hallelujah. Now, je, 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 je. open to Isaiah 38, verse 1 to 7. Isaiah 38, verse number 1 to 7. Are you there? Can you shout it? In those days was Ezekiah sick. And Isaiah the prophet, son of Amos, came unto him and said unto him, Thus said the Lord, Set the house in order, for thou shalt die and not live. Ezekiah turned his face towards the wall and prayed unto the Lord and said, Remember now, O oh Lord, I beseech thee, how I have walked before thee in truth and with perfect heart. And I've done that which is good in thy sight. And he wept so. And then came the same Isaiah that went to prophesy that God said you will die. The, after he finished the prayer, the same Isaiah, God spoke to him again and said, Go back. Uh -huh. Go and say to him again, Thus say me, the God of David, thy father. I have heard the prayers, I have seen thy tears. Behold.
God. My 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 God. Another thing you have to do to escape this death is catching a vision. Can you say catching a vision? <laughs> when I say catch a vision or catching a vision, what are you doing for God's sake? David prayed and said, show me where I'm fit in your plan, oh God. Teach me the way I ought to go that I may be forever in your way. Show me where I am fit into your plan. Catch a vision. Tell somebody catch a vision. What are you doing? What are you helping God to do here on earth? You know, this is God's work. But you, 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 you are not doing it. What is it that you are doing? Hezekiah prayed and said, he cried. I said, God, Bible said he set his face on the wall. And went and cried and said, God, remember how I have worked faithfully before thee. Remember what I have done for you, Lord. How come you allow death to take me away? And he said the same prophet. Oh, he looks like God forgot. God said, I remember, he has reminded me. No wonder the scripture said. He said, remind me of my words. And give me the strong reasons in Isaiah. They say you're asking me to do why must I do it? Why? Let me know why, why you want me to do it. Then give me strong reasons. He said the same prophet. He said, Go and tell him he will not die again. He just reminded me, oh, it looks like I forgot. Oh, this man is true. Look at what he did. You, what are you doing? To make sure you live long. Are you writing books that people will read and get transformed? What are you doing? Apart from your handwork, apart from your job, your personal endeavors, what are you doing free of charge for God? Which area have you committed yourself? If not your time, your intellectual, if not your intellectual, your resources, what are you doing? What vision have you caught? That when the enemy come, God will look at it and say, Ah, oh, because of this one, he will not go. Rise up. If you've not caught any vision, catch a vision today. Tell your neighbor, catch a vision today. Catch a vision. Stop living your life for yourself. If you live your life for yourself alone, it means you have no reason for living self. Not only for yourself and your family. Live your life. I've let your life also affect others positively. It's more than a reason for God to sustain you and keep you alive. Even when the enemy comes like a rolling lion, he will still defend you and keep you and protect you. Pick up your Bible, please. We are still standing. Matthew 10, verse 28. able to keep the soul. But far, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. So who is afraid of death here? Lift up your hand. Let me tell you that you are not a believer. Who is a, if you know you fear death, you are afraid of death here. Lift up your hand. Fear not them that cannot touch your spirit. Rather fear God that can kill both the spirit and destroy the body. People are afraid of this, afraid of that. Who is afraid of death? Fear not. For no reason will come near your head. God has given his angels charge over you to keep you, to sustain you, to lead you in all the way that you will go. No power will take you accidentally. No demon will double cross your life. It is a command. This one has been settled. He said, I will be with him. I will sustain him. Yea, I will keep him alive. 
and I'll be with him. So, are you afraid that you will die the way that person died in your family? That is how you will die? I have come to announce to you today that no way. It's not possible. It's not possible. Are you hearing me? Pick up your Bible again. The last verse. First Corinthians chapter 15. Verse 55 to 58. First Corinthians chapter 15. Verse 55. Let me tell you. Every problem you face in life is a trial period. The devil is just trying you and then God is using it to prepare you for your better place. So do not fear. He can't kill you. You are triumphing. Are you there now? Yes. As I said, are you there? Yes. In 1 Corinthians 15, 55 to 58. Let's read one to go. Shout it.
close our eyes and pray these prayers. I want you to shout seven times, I shall not die untimely. Say, I shall not die untimely seven times. One, two, go. One, two, three, shout it, four, five, six, seven. Now you have to close your eyes and pray this one. Say, I declare preservation over my life. 